Hey guys, this is chapter one of a proof of a number theoretic result from IMOC 2023 problem N5. We consider a prime P equal to 4K plus one and define X to be the residue of 2K over K when divided by P such that the absolute value of X is less than or equal to P minus one over two. We are asked to prove that the absolute value of X is less than or equal to two times the square root of P. Since it is not clear how to find a relationship between 2K over K modulo P, we will spend the first chapter with finding a new representation for X. We want to start with using the binomial formula. Since we have a 2K here, which is equal to P minus one over two, we consider 1 plus y to the power of p minus 1 over 2, which is nothing but the sum of i going from 0 to p minus 1 over 2 of p minus 1 over 2 over i times y to the power of i. Our first idea is to sum this equation up over many different values of y such that all of those summons except for 2k over k will cancel out. And to accomplish this, we want to use the fact that cyclic geometric series in FP are equal to zero. In particular, we sum this equation over all fourth powers modulo P. So let us define G in FP to be a primitive root. This tells us that G, G squared and so on up to G to the power of P minus one are all the non-zero residues in FP. And therefore, we can now write that the sum of j going from 1 to p minus 1 over 4, this is the number of quartic residues modulo p, of 1 plus g to the power of 4j. In this way, we get all of the fourth powers in fp to the power of p minus 1 over 2 is equal to the sum of i going from 0 to p minus 1 over 2 of p minus 1 over 2 over i times the sum of j going from 1 to p minus 1 over 4 of g to the power of 4 i j. Let's take a look at the value of this sum for different values of i. We see that if i is 0 or p minus 1 over 4 or p minus 1 over 2, then g to the power of 4 i is equal to 1 in fp and thus every single summit here is equal to 1. And therefore, if we call this S of i, then in this case, S of i will equal p minus 1 over 4. Otherwise, p minus 1 over 4 will not divide i. And since g is a primitive root, we can conclude that g to the power of 4i will not be equal to 1 in fp. Therefore, we can use the formula for geometric series to obtain that S of i is equal to g to the power of 4i times 1 minus g to the power of i times p minus 1 divided by 1 minus g to the power of 4i. By Fermat's little theorem, g to the power of i to the power of p minus 1 is equal to 1 in fp and therefore all of this equals 0. In FP. Therefore, all but three summons here equal zero, and hence we are left with p minus one divided by four times two k over k plus two in FP. And now we can see that we can rearrange this for two k over k. We found a first representation for two k over k, and now want to interpret this sum. Notice that one plus g to the power of four j goes through all the values of quartic residues plus 1 modulo p. Moreover, Euler's criterion tells us that a to the power of p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to the Legendre symbol of a over p in fp. So this equals 1 if and only if a is a non-zero quadratic residue modulo p, 0 if a is equal to 0 in fp, and minus 1 otherwise. We would like to prove that 2k over k is close to 0 modulo p. In other words, we would like to prove that this sum is also close to zero modulo p. Now that we have our interpretations, this tells us that we want to show that almost half of quartic residues plus one are quadratic residues modulo p. That is why we want to consider the number of pairs x comma y 
both in Fp such that x to the power of 4 plus 1 is equal to y squared. Today I denote this quantity with n1. In the next chapter, that is going to be quite an independent video from this one, we will take a look at generalized values of nr. And I claim that our sum equals n1 minus p minus 1 over 4. Because n1 captures exactly the information that we need to evaluate our sum, we just need to count the ones, minus ones and zeros that we have here. Usually, for any given quartic residue and a given quadratic residue, there are four possible values for x and two for y. The only case where this is not true is the residue zero. To deal with this, we define a to be the number of values for y such that zero to the power of four plus one is equal to y squared and b analogously for x. We get a zero in our sum if and only if one plus g to the power of four j equals zero. These are exactly the summons counted by b, but we count such summons four times because we have four possible values for x, and therefore we start with zero times b over four. We get a one if and only if one plus g to the power of four j is a non-zero quadratic residue modulo p. Thus, we begin by writing n1 minus b. Now note that g to the power of 4j only attains the values of the non-zero quartic residues, modulo p, and therefore we also have to subtract an a, because we never can be in this case, because zero is not one of the values of g to the power of 4j. And since we count all of those pairs eight times in n1, we divide by a. The remaining summons equal negative one. Taking a look at our expression, we see that the b terms cancel each other out. Therefore, we are left to deal with a, and we see that a must always equal two, because one equals y squared if and only if y is equal to plus or minus one modulo p. And of course, we are dealing with a p greater than two, and so these are different residue classes. Finally, this term simplifies to our desired value of n1 minus p minus 1 all divided by 4. We plug this value into our expression for x to finally obtain that x is equal to minus 1 minus n1 in fp. This is the final result of our first chapter. Can you finish the proof until my next video?